Hello everyone, and welcome to my rather bizarrely colored, I'll grant, we're in a mushroom biome, that's why the sky is weird, uh, test world, and today I'm going to be demonstrating how to make the force field actuated tree farm that I've been using inside of Carpenter Station. So there's a few things we'll need, I've kind of uh, arrayed them in terms of different steps in making this. Uh, you'll see I've already set up a force field uh, core here, which we're going to need to actually power the force field. And there's the injector, there's the core, I made all of that in the course of the Carpenter Station episodes, and you can get the recipes through Not Enough Items. Uh, rather, very tremendously excessive power input here, because you really need, like, a sapling's worth of power, and it'll be perfectly fine every time you try to use one of these. Uh, so just toss that in every now and then, you'll be fine. Okay, so, first thing we need is to set up the actual force field part, so that is a block cutter upgrade, and that uh, causes whenever the force field tries to form, if there is a block in the way, it will drop it as an item. And then we need a directional projector, which just creates like a line of force field, and that needs to be pointing straight up. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that is so that it will cut out the core of the tree, and that will then cause all of the different pieces of wood to just fall straight down in front of the transposer. We then need a block there, that's where our pulse form is going to go. And we need a block there to put our uh, timer on. We also need a block here and there just for the moment to actually put a uh, assembler and a transposer on in a moment. But for first, we're going to need to take our blank MFFS card into our core to get our frequency card. Nice little open animation there. And we need to put our frequency card in there. Now we need to set the distance to 1. That is because if we have it to 0, it will cut out the dirt block that we need to put our saplings on. And the length needs to be fairly large. This is so that it will cut out the entirety of the tree's core rather than just, uh, let's say, a part of it. It's also important to decide which sapling you want at this point because different trees grow to different heights. And also, jungle trees and oak trees also all have a tendency to branch, which will mean that you'll have uh, pieces hanging around indefinitely because the force field will not be able to hit them. Okay, moving on, we have the actual red power parts of this. So, we put our assembler here, we put our transposer here, and our, oop, our sorting machine needs to go where this block is. Just about. So let me fly. There we go. Yeah, still working on the lag issues, don't worry about it. Okay, so... The sorting machine goes there so it can receive what comes out of this transposer. Next, we need to connect the output of the sorting machine to the input of our assembler. And that is so that we can feed back any saplings that transposer picks up into the mixture. And then another one off the side here. Yep, let me just set the time today. The sun's going down. Okay, so anything that's anything that we want to output to any system, we go through here. Anything we want to go back into it, we go through there. And we do that by coloring them. I'm just going to use white and orange. So white goes into our assembler. Orange goes into our output. Okay, so. Anything we want here, let's just uh, set this to anything with the, with the default there. We put our saplings there, and that will allow us to send saplings back into the assembler. It also means that we can color, say, bone meal whites, pump it into the same network, and it will go into the assemblers. So, that done, we move on to the actual wiring part. So, we're going to put our timers on first. First timer we need to go is here on the back of the dirt block. But you can put it anywhere as long as it goes into this transposer. Now you want this moving fairly fast. You can have it going at uh, point 0.2 or whatever the lowest of the timer is, but there isn't really much need to it. And then we need another one in front of where the sapling is going to be. That can again be going however quickly you want these systems to be running. And what that's doing is sending an odd pulse into the tie into where the sapling will be every X number of seconds. That is important because if you use a straight current, say like a torch or a lever, uh, there is a problem with block updates when a tree grows. 
and it will not update the redstone connectivity, meaning power won't actually go into the block when it turns into a log. So we, we need the timer to make sure that that actually does go through uh, to create an update. Next, we need a pulse former here, and that is important. So the wrong chest. That is important because if you just have like, a piece of wire, say red alloy, then what happens is that the output sticks. It stays on, and that means that whilst this might still be going, the force field is going to stay up and you won't be able to do anything for quite a while. Okay, and now we just need a bit of red alloy wire. And that is to carry the power from our pulse former into our force field. So now, if I plonk this here... Uh, hang on, one second. Just stick our output chest down here. Uh, oh, and this, the sorting machine does need to be charged. You don't need to charge it very much, you don't even need to charge it continually, it uses up very little power. But it does need to be charged in order for the transposer to recognize it as being a valid output for items. And, yep, yeah, it shines up like that whenever you do, whenever it is charged. It doesn't, yeah, the, the sorting machine only really uses charge when you're actually using it to pull items out of chests. When you're just showing them through, it doesn't matter too much. And there we go, that's the force field working. And we should find a couple of, yep, two wooden planks there. So, let's now work on the wiring. Now the wiring is a little bit of a pain, it has to be said, but it's not too difficult to work out once you actually know how to do it. So, we're going to be using bundled wires, and we're also going to be putting to use a sequencer. So that's that, bundle cable, and there's our two different colors. So, this is just the simplest possible you can do. You can do it in more complex ways, you can even link them across different units. So I just have an entire network con con controlled by a single sequencer. And we're going to be using this here. So let's just set that down to a second. So it'll pulse white and then it'll pulse green. You need to have the space in between for the assembler to close its shutter window and stop trying to do something. It can't switch them instantaneously. So, now that that's done, we can take our bone mills and our saplings and we can go into our s assembler. You can see there's the, uh, there is this sequencing time here. We don't want that, we want to have the colors. You can use sequences if you're planning on always having some bone meal around. Generally speaking, I don't advise it. So put our saplings into green, you can see it's already planted one. We can put our bone meal into white, and we should see this spring up very soon. Yep. And that's just going to keep on running through it until it runs out of bone meal, and then it will still work because eventually the tree will grow normally and it will still get detected by the harvesting and you'll plant another one there. And meanwhile, everything comes through here and into our output. So, that is the force field actuated tree farm. You can stick as many units as you, as you like next to each other here. You can even attach them by the same white pipe that's going, going in here. Uh, and it will keep on running more or less indefinitely. So, have fun building this system, and I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial.